As a child, Albert Einstein was fascinated with a compass. Watching the steady northward pull of the needle, he said there must be something behind things, something deeply hidden. He wanted to find that something. As an adult, he devoted his life to physics in the attempt to understand the laws of the universe. He studied light, motion, gravity, space, time, electromagnetism. He developed the quantum theory. He was awarded the Nobel Prize. His theory of relativity and the expansion of the universe led to the Big Bang Theory. But what was behind the Big Bang? Could it be that something was hidden wasn't a what, but a who? Something about the mystery and beauty of creation and its order kept bringing Einstein back to the idea that there must be a God. He said, We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library filled with many books in many languages. The child knows someone must have written those books. It does not know how. It does not understand the languages in which they are written. The child dimly suspects a mysterious order to the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what it is. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being toward God. Throughout his life, Albert Einstein, the man of science, would struggle with the idea of faith. He had been zealous in his Jewish faith as a child in Germany, but later turned away from it as a teen. Popular science books had convinced him much of the Bible could not be true. As an adult, he admitted that he was enthralled by the luminous figure of the Nazarene. No one can read the Gospels without feeling the actual presence of Jesus, he said. His personality pulsates every word. No myth is filled with such life. Yet when asked the question, do you believe in God, Einstein could not produce a straightforward response. I'm not an atheist. The problem involved is too vast for our limited minds. Through all his searching, Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientific minds of modern times, struggled and wrestled with the question of God, but in the end, he did not have faith. But it's the end that does matter. The Bible makes a distinction between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of the world is knowledge or power, but the wisdom of God is faith. In the end, it is only faith that matters. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1.25 that even the foolishness of God is greater than man's wisdom. Later on in verse 27, Paul writes that God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. But what is this foolishness? Could it be believing in something that can't be seen? Clinging to what Einstein called that something behind things, that something deeply hidden. Hebrews 11.1 1 defines faith as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Through his study of the universe, Einstein saw the evidence of something not seen, the evidence of God. His studies took him as far as science could go toward understanding the nature and presence of God. But science led him only to more theories and equations. What he needed was faith. Hebrews 11.6 says that without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. At times, all of us will struggle with our faith. There will be times when we see the hand of God evident in our lives. Then it will be easy to say that God exists and we believe in Him. But there will also be times of hardship, times when the hand of God seems hidden. It is for these times that God gives us faith, the solid belief in His presence and His faith, even when we can't see Him. How do you handle your moments of doubt when you're searching? How do you face ideas and discoveries that challenge the foundations of what you believe? Do you allow them to be obstacles that threaten your faith or opportunities for your faith to grow?